Hey, I'm Michael Artsis here live in Greenwich, Connecticut at the Greenwich Concourse de Elegance. And this is something very special. You are looking at the Tucker. 1948, this car is amazing. I believe if there wasn't a Tucker, there wouldn't be a Tesla. There wouldn't be a lot of other car companies because Tucker has a great history and Tucker was the most innovative car manufacturer in the 40s and nearly broke up the big three. The big three <laughs> took Tucker down. We've got Preston Tucker's grandson here. Great grandson. Great, great grandson. Sorry, you're not old enough to be his grandson, <laughs> no, great but grandson. great grandson. Great, great, grandson. great or great, great? Great. Just one great. One, one great. great. That is great. <laughs> and, uh, and, and you, sir, are the owner of the I Tucker. 12 years now. Yeah. And this is Rob, and Rob is the, the builder of this. Um, although really it's a Tucker, but you're the builder because this is a, a new version of the Tucker. It's an exact like replica in some ways and yet modernized in others. Um, right. And then, uh, and, and we're going to talk about that, but it's amazing. I got so excited when I saw the Tucker. And so now you're building cars. Is that what you're doing? Uh, well, I'm, I'm helping him build cars. <laughs> so the torpedo. Right. All right. Coupe. Just hold this. The area. torpedo is a two door. It's a coupe and yep. it's, Beyond belief. You, all right. So first to... of all, what's it what's it like being uh, Preston Tucker's great grandson? Uh, it's 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 entertaining. <laughs> I get I get to go to a lot of neat stuff and uh, get to hang out with a lot of neat people and get involved in projects with Bob and Rob and it's it's a blast. And yeah. and so, I mean, we put up with them. That's, that's what it is. Your great grandfather was so revolutionary, though. Yes. Uh, and I mean, what are the stories like in the family? Like when you hear about him. Um. Just that he was, you know, such a he was he was a very polished guy. He was uh, he never you never saw him out of a suit. He uh, he was the really really great salesman. Um, That's what a lot of people say though. That's yeah. the knock that he was a salesman and not a manufacturer. But oh, I mean, no. he Who was such the, a visionary. Yeah. And the and the truth I think is that he really did manufacture some wonderful vehicles that unfortunately didn't get to uh, reach their potential because of all the things that went down. Yeah, that, that, no. that's exactly right. But who did the turrets for the World War II bombers? <laughs> who <laughs> invented them? That Preston was, Tucker, yeah. Right. So. See what so, I mean? So, so he, he wasn't was, just, he was a just a salesman. Well, no, not I was actually, salesman. Was short. So, uh, he, he was, but he was really a, a genius. I mean, some of the things, yeah, so first of all, you got the, the center headlight, yep. the, the swiveling lights, is that correct? Yep, yeah, so the, the 48 has the, the light in the center that turns with the wheels. Now, I don't understand something. We still don't have that on cars today, really. I mean, we're starting to maybe see it on some very high-end luxury cars, but it seems like if that was in the 40s why couldn't we have that in the 50s 60s 70s 80s 90s 2000s <laughs> yeah i think they have uh i know the cadillac is kind yeah, of some, some of them have some one. luxury yeah. cars right, but yeah. today but yeah. i mean we're, we're in 2017 we're, we're just there's getting to it now yeah. yeah and then uh i know that there was a i believe a quad exhaust on the 48 there was yeah three on each side three on each side so six yeah uh which was much more fuel efficient uh, the intention actually originally was that they would have a pipe for each cylinder so that if you lost a cylinder, you could easily tell which one it was because that, that pipe would you know, have no gas coming out. So that was the original thought. Rear engine. I love rear engine cars. Rear engine. What was the thought behind doing that in a sedan, uh, back, especially back then? Uh, well, I think primarily it goes back to the engineering part of with a, with a rear engine, you can have a much lower or a smaller frontal area. So the aerodynamics in the car are greatly improved. It was one of the first to, maybe even the first, to wind tunnel test uh, for aerodynamics. Is that correct? Uh, I don't think he actually got into a wind tunnel, but they did have a huge, huge, you know, emphasis on, on aerodynamics. Seat belts, three-point seat belts, I think, that, or seat belts in general. It was the first, something like no. that. <laughs> actually, it did not have seat belts. Oh, was that? Common misconception. Really? Yeah. Really? Uh, huh. They intended to have seat belts, but uh, they were taken out because uh, it was implied that the car was unsafe. Oh, yeah. So oh, they, yes. They ended, they, yes. They, they ended up taking them out. Oh, Can you yeah. imagine that? So he was <laughs> so visionary that yeah. I want to save people's lives, but you have to put seat belts in because the car is unsafe. It scared them too much. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. But what are some of the other the features? I know it had a lot of safety features. Yeah, quite a few. So one of one of the, probably the, uh, the more prominent ones is the pop-out windshield. Um, so that when you got in a car accident, your windshield popped out so that your head didn't go through it. Um, the way that they positioned the steering, they put the steering box behind the front frame member. Um, in cars previous to that, it was in front, so that when you got in a front-end collision, your steering column came up and whacked you in the face. Um, it's the first car with a padded dashboard, um, so that, that's a big one. There's a crash compartment uh, on, the, on the passenger side that you were supposed to dive into if you got into a crash. Maybe uh -huh. one of the more... Uh, 
optimistic safety. <laughs> Assume crash position. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yes, absolutely yeah. optimistic. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, the, the idea was there, and I think that's the important part. Wasn't so. there something with the brakes as well? Uh, I was originally going to have disc brakes all the way around uh, with a pretty innovative design, 360 degree disc brake. The cars ended up with conventional drum rigs just due to cost and, and things like that. But I believe something with the frame and the chassis and the body as well, uh, safety wise. I mean, it was all about safety, mm -hmm. which I thought was very innovative. Yeah. So the, I mean, the frame, kind of, or the the frame and the body are, are one. There is no, there. It's a unibody. Um, but the, the real idea of getting the car very low, so that the center of gravity was very low, just overall making it less, you know, more stable. That kind of thing. So the overall design of the car was intended for safety, but also was a pretty good performer for its day. As and well. and, uh, and design as well. Well, I mean, obviously that's always subject to. Yeah, that was the, uh, what's the his name from uh, that was the head guy at Ford eventually. Uh, Alex Tremulus. Alex Tremulus. Yeah. What, what about the wipers? Uh, was there something with the wipers that made them more efficient? Not that I know of. I don't think so. Now you know your stuff. Uh, do you guys all sit around and talk uh, about the 48 all the time? Uh, we we talk about Tucker quite a bit. Do you have one? Do you have a real one? They're worth like what a million and a half now? <laughs> yeah, they're they're valuable. Um, I don't I don't have one, but uh, you ever go to like uh, the Peterson Museum or a museum and see one and just go, wow, great grandpa made that? Oh yeah, all the time. I uh, there's there's actually a museum in Hershey, Pennsylvania that has three of them. So uh, I, I try to get out there as much as I can, and, and I'm working with. Uh, another owner right now on, on maybe doing something with uh, with a car he just bought. So I, I, I get around him quite a bit. <laughs> wow. And then, uh, now how come you guys didn't try and start a car company uh, again? Because uh, it didn't go well the first time. <laughs> <laughs> now, well, so the story is, and correct me if I'm wrong, by the way, did you guys like the movie as a family? Do, do you feel that was an accurate portrayal of everything? Yeah, I mean, it was it, the, the core message is on. There's some right. things that were added for, you know. So the idea is that uh, Preston Tucker in the 40s says, hey, I'm going to make a better car. He makes, uh, he comes out with the torpedo, then he's going to be the 48. He, uh, he does everything uh, different safety-wise. Everything's different, and that's the idea. And um, he goes to car shows, and he's going he's gonna, to, because back then that's how you said this is the car. He sells, starts selling dealerships, and he gets the government. Let me. Yeah. That's how it started with him. His yeah. grandpa was one of the original dealers signed up wow. by Preston yeah. Tucker in right, where? In Yonkers? Yonkers, New York. Uh, in Yonkers. Okay, See? hold on. We're going to get to this. This is good. So hold on a <laughs> That's second. Right. That's so right. So then the That's government right. likes this idea. He wants to create jobs and all this and, and, and basically uh, does something with a, like giving him a factory or giving him a discount on a factory or tax rebate on a factory that was a Ford fa formerly a Ford factory or something. Um, and so he's, he can build an assembly line and all this and he hires people and he gets things going. And then the big three start putting pressure on Washington. Washington, allegedly, let's say, um, because they um, because they feel threatened by this guy because he's getting so much momentum, oh, yeah. and so that's how the folklore goes. The movie goes anyway, and uh, and and so there's lawsuits about uh, fraud about him being fraudulent because he was selling and not delivering it, much like you would do today on a Kickstarter project. If you didn't deliver, people get upset. Well, he, it, it, there were delays, and so people started accusing him of being fraudulent and all sorts of stuff. There were lawsuits. By the time he ended up fighting these lawsuits, I believe, if I'm incorrect, I mean, if I'm correct, that he was exonerated. Yeah, he was, yeah. right? At, at the end. Um, but, uh, but by that point, the company was basically bankrupt, and a few years later, he passed away. Is this all correct or pretty accurate? Pretty close, yeah. So he was, he was uh, actually indicted for fraud along with, in the movie, they show it as just him, but there was a number of other defendants. But uh, the company was actually not bankrupt at the end, but they, uh, he was removed as the chairman and, and, and it went into receivership just to uh, pay all the dealers and all the creditors. The government, when they, when they did do the indictment, they seized all of the blueprints and the records and really they couldn't, they couldn't operate. And so they, they did have money and they ended up owning actually air-cooled motors which supplied the motors until uh, the early 60s. But uh, unfortunately, the, the, the car was dead with, with, with the trial. Wow. Yeah. And then he did die a few years later, right? He died in 1956. Sad. Sad. So much to give the world. Uh, and and unfortunately, the world took so much. Um, all right. So your story is you fell in love with the Tucker, and you just had to have one? What's the story? And, and then your, your grandfather owned the dealership, um, yep. which I'm sure was very exciting and promising at the time. Yeah, yeah I would say that that, that was probably uh, what he it. considered the most exciting time in, in his uh, uh, career as a businessman. He thought that that was going to, the, to, to be the, the success 
<coughs> and um, from there the family would maybe have a, uh, a string of dealerships in, in the northeast. But it didn't go that way. And um, he did he did love the car and, and he believed in Preston Tucker. And he raised my father um, to also love the car, know everything about it. And that was passed on to me. So my father and I together worked, worked on making the Tucker for my grandfather. Yeah. One, um, we couldn't afford to buy him one, but we had what we thought, you know, enough ability to um, to try to make one. So we set out on that on that monumental task of making a car <laughs> from scratch with very little resources, and uh, we didn't have a, an original one to copy. So we had to actually make the the tooling and everything that it takes to make a car. So we did that, and um, as that car was finishing, uh, unfortunately, my grandfather died right at that time, and he never got to have it. Um, so the car stayed with us and. And Bob, uh, Bob Caracas is, a, is a, a car collector from New Jersey and friend. And he saw what we were trying to do and, and had a love for the car, had a knowledge of the car, listened to what motivated us to get to that point and decided that this was something he wanted to be a part of. Here's what happened. <laughs> I was down there. Remember your place. You, I, I, had, I was into the track cars, the race cars, uh, or strictly sports cars. And... I heard they had a chassis dyno, so, uh, so I wanted to have them tune one of my track cars. And I went down there, and you had this. It was going to SEMA. It was going out to Las Vegas, and it was going to be auctioned off, right? I was considering auction. Oh, I thought Bar Barrett Jackson was yeah, going to yeah. do it. But SEMA uh, isn't an auction. That was just a show. I know that. So know what that. we were going to do was get the car together for SEMA, show it for the first time. So when Bob walked in the shop, he saw a bare body at, on a chassis. No fenders, no interior. Or anything. I now, now, there were only 48 Tuckers, yeah. uh, and uh, many of them don't exist anymore. It's, it's well, one 48 of, exist of the 51 that were originally made. Okay, so there are 51. There are only 48 left. Uh, just a beautiful car. I've always loved the Tucker and lusted after the Tucker. Obviously, Bob, the same thing. So you walk into the garage, and what happens, Bob? No, I never th thought that much about it before. I walked in, and but who would not when you see this? Yeah. I, I mean, saw this, and I said, and you told me, it's going out to Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. I said, how much? <laughs> I mean, there's no way in the world I could ever pass this up. And I bought it on the spot, and ever since then, for 12 years, we've had it every place. I mean, I have more pleasure out of this car than anything I ever had. What uh, changes are to the Tucker? I mean, obviously, you basically recreated a Tucker. I see it's on air suspension. I don't think that that was available in 1948. Um, well, there, got... there, there is even even a little history of Tucker behind the stands on this car. And if you see any renderings of the Tucker car, they were much lower than the actual cars that they produced. So the 50 cars were very high in stance. And that was for the suspension and tire combination that they had to work with. But if you notice, the, the renderings and the artist uh, visual on the car always had it very low, much lower than the production car. So that's why we decided that it would be okay and still in the spirit of what Tucker, Preston Tucker liked in a car by making this car lower. And the other thing is that we're not trying to pass this off as a clone to an original car. This is a car that has its own presence. So it has a modern stance, modern power plant with an entire combination of colors that you know didn't come on a 1948 Tucker. He but this car colors. has its, you own, believe it? its own place. Well, you, did, you did a great job, and it's And guess it's what remarkable. it's titled as? Uh, a Tucker? 1948 Tucker. It's got regular plates. Right. Yeah. And, and so, uh, are <laughs> I'll never you, figure that one are out. You, are you building these to sell now? Is this no, what no, you're doing? No, no, no. This, is just, this was a one-off. <laughs> We've only built a, a handful of these cars, and, and for the most part, they've stayed close to the family. Um, there's one in Japan, uh, in a museum in Japan. Um, so we don't offer them really to the public. We don't we don't take uh, uh, orders for parts or anything. Some of them were movie cars that you built. We built right? one movie yeah. car after this for the movie Sin City. So the movie Sin City Two, by um, uh, Robert Rodriguez. It was a Frank Miller novel, a graphic novel that they converted into a movie. And uh, so Frank Miller made the book with all Tuckers in it. So this car then was, or not this car, but one like this car that, that we made was used in the movie Sin City 2. Does the headlight turn? Yes. Yeah. Headlight turns. 
this car, we don't really consider it rear engine. We consider it mid-engine yeah. because the engine is in front of the rear axle, but still behind the rear seat. So it maintains some of that tucker thought, but a better balance because the weight now is, in f is forward of the axle. I actually love uh, mid-engines. I'm sure that a, a rear engine, much like a Porsche 911, um, would have, you know, uh, would have been a little bit tail happy, even, especially even back more then. So, with a wheelbase this long, yeah. because you, now you have leverage, you know, working yeah. against you. How's it to drive? It, the car is nice to drive. Um, if if you drove this, um, you would feel, you would absolutely feel the the um, improvement of of the balance on this car versus an original car. Excellent. When I picked up my grandson from school a while ago in this, he said two of the kids fainted <laughs> well i gotta tell you it's pretty it's pretty spectacular um and i'm sure it brought you closer to your grandfather a little bit well absolutely i mean we always felt like um you know this is something that really meant a lot to him and that meant a lot to us and we thank bob very much for being such a part of it and, and making it possible for and now we're doing the torpedo for, to so what you, he's years. building you the torpedo he is building the torpedo well, and did you have the blueprints to this is that what you went off of we had a friend who had an original car that allowed us to come in and take very close measurements and templates and things that we needed, information that we needed, and, and he allowed us to do that. He was right in, in North Jersey. Without his, his help, we never would have been able to achieve this. Uh, what are you going to do for the Torpedo? The Torpedo, believe it or not, we had, we had a bit more information on that car um, because in the Peterson Museum in California is a quarter scale model that was made in 1946 by George Lawson, the original designer for Preston Tucker. We called the museum and they allowed us to come in and take three dimensional scannings of that model. So we went in and we collected all the data from, from that original sculpture and now we're able to use that information to make a full size body. Wow. Um, and then chassis is original or you all use somebody else? All fabricated. And then the, the, the wheels and tire package uh, are obviously much bigger and, and lower profile than His we're on the original. Machine. Yes, these that's are 22 inch <laughs> wheels. Uh, that's our own design and made in house. My father is a machinist and he yep. actually machined those wheels in our shop. Uh, what's it like to see this? Uh, it's really your grandfather, your great grandfather's dream, uh, living. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty surreal. I mean, it, it, it never gets old. So uh, be able to be a part of it is it's been a lot of fun, right? Oh, it's it's been a lot will of fun. there be another Tucker? I don't know. Uh, I I don't know. I, I think resurrect uh, it, man. Come on, you got the guy who'll do it with you. Do it. I mean, no, we're, we're having as much fun as you we mean are for a now. Company? And, uh, no, the torpedo is the one. If they can bring yeah. back That's the, the DeLoreans with some company, you guys can bring back the Tucker. No. Uh, Rob, thank you very much. Thank you, Bob, and thank you so much. Uh, this has been wonderful. We're here live at the Greenwich Concourse de Elegance. You'll never see such spectacular cars pretty much anywhere else in your life, such rare and unique cars, and we're going to bring you a whole lot more action. This is my favorite car show here in Greenwich, Connecticut. You're the Terrifics. You make Be Terrific special. At Be Terrific TV on all social media. Stay with us. We've got a lot more to come, and we're here tomorrow live with the European Day. Don't go anywhere. Stay with us.